What is going on, Pats Nation? It's Patriots Global here, back with another video. Of course, y'all already know that I had to kick this off the right way. Bring on bro schmo. But before we get into that, I want to welcome everybody back to the channel. I appreciate all the support you guys have been giving me, especially throughout the draft process. By the way, if you guys hear that, that is Chase. He's going crazy. Y'all love Chase, though. So, I mean... I didn't, yeah, see, there he is. I, I didn't think I needed to kick him out because y'all are always commenting to show him. So you'll probably see him at some point. But you guys know how we kick off these videos, kick off the live stream. There's only one way to do it to get everybody pumped up. So let's just cue that intro. Yes, sir. We are right back at it. So, Baroshma, what is going on, buddy? Not much, not much, man. I am. I'm not gonna lie. I'm slacking in the intro game, dude. <laughs> no, dude. Like that. That just comes to props for like. Because I went to an art school, a performing school, for eight years, and I graduated from it. So, like, you just meet people and you meet music producers and all. So, just came in clutch here. I, I made the video, but he made the the music for me. So, like, that's a sound. Yeah. You won't find that sound anywhere else. It was made from scratch by a music producer that I know. So oh, little shit. little insight for everybody man. asking. <laughs> Connections, man. I mean, I'm all about that. All about that. But yes, for those who don't know Bro Schmo, guys, like this is my draft analysis guy. This is my go-to guy when it comes to the draft. Knows his stuff. It's not, you know, your ESPN NFL network guy. So, you know, everything is going to be legit. Everything is going to be real. If you are somebody who doesn't love the draft, Watch Bro Schmo. You'll I, you'll immediately start loving the draft. I promise you. And if you want to start getting into the 2022 draft, if you you know a, a couple months from now you want to start getting into the prospects, Bro Schmo is going to have you covered for that. Bro Schmo, you want to talk a little bit about you, your channel? Where can they find you? Yeah, you can find me at Bro Schmo on YouTube, and uh, yeah, you could probably find my Twitter in the uh, description. I don't know what my handle is. <laughs> I'm one of those old men. Yeah, I retweet a lot of stuff. But uh, no, yeah, my, my, my whole channel, you were speaking about 2022 draft. I'm about to put out early rankings for that. Just, you know, some guys to highlight, to look out for before I do my big deep dive during the summer. But uh, yeah, man, I'm uh, everything draft for the most part uh, with a little NFL analysis here and there. The channel's all about football discourse, rationalize our football opinions. Um, I just, I love the conversation, man. Love the conversation. Yes, sir. We love to hear it. We actually did a video on Broshmo's channel right before the draft. Exactly. Right before. I think it was like the day. I think it dropped like yeah, what the day of the draft. The first half of that audio actually uh, was muted on my recording. So that's why I only could use the mock draft part of it. Really? Like, yeah. I didn't have the heart to say anything. I was like, maybe he'll notice if he looks watches it. <laughs> no, honestly, though, like that video was what? I think the video you posted was like an hour or two. We were on for like yeah, four we hours for having while. like crazy discussion so I, I didn't even expect you to use all of it because man we were just going on and on this is this is just what you love to see like someone who loves football just talking with another person who loves football i mean that's what it's all about that's why we do this that's why we have channels so honestly like it was just it was just fun to even talk about it whether it was posted or not but overall so Brosh was a Dolphins fan, first off, for those who don't know. So this is this might be a little bit hard for him to talk about. Uh, yep, see? Almost wore so, this instead of the Bass Pro Shop hat. <laughs> so yeah, Brosh was a fan, so, uh, a Dolphins fan, so this might be a, a little bit hard for him to talk about because I think the Patriots had a pretty dang good draft. But Brosh you're the draft expert here. What did you think about the Patriots draft and just like what, what would be your overall grade for the Patriots draft? Oh, uh, well, you could have, uh, I'm not just saying this because I'm on your channel. You could verify this on my video, uh, my draft grade video. I gave them an A+. Plus. Uh, do, they didn't have to trade up for Mac Jones. He just fell to them. That's amazing value, not having to trade up for a uh, quarterback as Mac Jones and just letting him fall to you because he was a first-round pick. Just uh, I didn't like the idea of having to trade picks to get him. Uh, yeah, and when they did trade up, Christian Barmore was a first-rounder. He could have gone in the top 20. Um, stuff came out a little later that may maybe you know you could believe why he may have fell, but still, like that was a first round value there. Uh, they they just kept grabbing value in the draft, and I loved it. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, wow. From a, from a Dolphins fan, giving them an A plus. I mean, yeah, give everyone's them everyone's gonna be like, everyone's gonna. Yeah, I gave him an A minus. So everyone here is probably like, yo, he's a better like Patriots reporter than you are, a hole. Um, Just but no. <laughs> well, it's because it's because every single year I get those comments so like, dude, you're being like way too generous. You're being way too nice about this. So I decided to go a little bit more harsh this year. Um, I think this is one of the best drafts that the Patriots, at least potential wise, that the Patriots could have, you know, when you look at the last few years and even the last even decade or, or two from Bill Belichick, I think this has the potential, but I did decide to get, because I did a lot of research on, you know, the guys and just the, this draft in general, this draft class, I did a lot of uh, analysis. So, I mean, I, I thought I'd get a little bit more tough. And for me, I was thinking more about not just the player, but also you know, where do they fit with the Patriots scheme value, the depth, what did they have to give up? Where in the draft did they get them? So there was just like a lot of different components here, but I mean, overall, it sounds like from a Dolphins fan, um, got to give props to what the Patriots did. So just out of curiosity, where would you rank the AFC East from like guys who had the best draft to guys who had the worst? Would you put Patriots at like one or two? Um, Try and go back to my rankings. I I think I had Patriots, then I had the Jets with an A. Okay. Because Patriots had an A plus, Jets had an A. Uh, I think I put the Dolphins at B. I think the Bills had a B plus though. So I, I actually had the Dolphins having the worst draft. And I actually got a lot of hate on that channel for that too. Like <laughs> it is what it is. I thought they had an okay draft. Like a B is not a bad grade. No, no, no. It's just people don't want to hear if their team is not as good as, as they wanted it to be, that's just essentially what it comes down to. I, I don't think that the bills or the dolphins necessarily had a bad draft. I think it does just come some with, with questions just because I know like kind of both, both, both ways, like there's question marks with those guys that they picked, especially higher up, whether it's injury or I think injury was kind of like the main concern with a good amount of those yeah, guys. Phillip was, Rivers was, or Phillip yeah. Rivers. Well, Phillip, uh, Jalen Phillips. There we go. Jalen Phillip Phillips Rivers. Was a, he was a big one. <laughs> he was a yeah. big one. Yeah. Then we traded a future third rounder for Liam Eichenberg, who might end up just being a guard where a lot of the NFL viewed him as a guard because of uh, he had like, 30 inch some arm length so yeah i don't know i i had questions and then i, I like i like Jevin uh javon holland but with trevon merrick who was the top safety on my board still around it, i don't know it was i again i had questions i just had questions yeah exactly if you have if you have these questions like that's essentially going to bring them down and respectfully so i mean even waddle as great of a player he is, he does have some injury concerns there. So, I Especially mean, when you all school on the board, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like when you're picking all of these players that have a lot of these injury concerns so high up, there is going to be questions. And look, I will say watching this draft, it was, it didn't disappoint. It was a great draft. Yeah. And I, I really didn't expect some of these teams to go the route that they did. I mean, whether we're going to talk about the, um, let's say the, the Raiders, for example, or, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think they should have got offensive line, not about the Patriots, but yeah, they, I think they should have gone offensive line, but who they did at that point probably wasn't great. Um, just some of the edge rushers too, that got kind of picked before others. Like if it, if it fits your scheme, it fits your scheme, but there's just certain picks where I was like, eh, I don't know about that one. I feel like you should have gone this direction. And I feel like there was a good amount yeah. of that just in the first round. Oh yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of interesting fallers too, in the draft uh, just cause a late day uh, medical stuff. Like JOK, he was flagged for a heart condition that ended up being a uh, false false positive test, and no one wow. found out until after the draft. So yeah, Cleveland I was wondering without knowing. I was wondering what was going on with him because he was dropping down, and it got to fifteen, and I was like, "Ooh!" I was like, "I want the quarterback though, so whatever." And then I was like, eh, "Maybe they could trade back up." And then it got to the second, and I was like, "Yo, yeah, Patriots got to pick him." And I mean, essentially they didn't, but I think, you know, whatever, it was excellent value for the Cleveland Browns. I think they got a really good pick. Um, but to hop into the individual guys here, talk a little bit about them straight off the bat. This is going to be one y'all. If y'all are around the channel a lot, you, you know, I'm going to say you love the pick. You hate the pick. There is just no in between from what I've seen specifically with Pat's nation. I've seen maybe a couple guys be in the middle. But for the most part, it's you love him or you hate him. <laughs> At 15th overall, the New England Patriots get their quarterback of the future in Mac Jones. The Patriots don't go Justin Fields after all the reports 
Justin Fields isn't there. The Patriots don't trade up. What are your thoughts? It was, that's wild. I, when I saw the Bears trade up, like my jaw dropped. I was like, wow, the Bears making good moves. This is wild. <laughs> but uh, I, again, somehow. yeah, again, like if if Mac Jones was going to fall anywhere, the Patriots felt like the perfect situation. Like he he th- he has great accuracy underneath and in the intermediate. He throws with great anticipation. Um, he's very good inside of structure, and that's just something the Patriots like offer him. That's something Bill Belichick loves to work with, or at least proven that he loved to work with. Like look at uh, guys like Jimmy G, um, Brady to a greater extent, but Mac Jones is not Brady, obviously. But uh, yeah, man, and that offensive line is going to be able to protect him because I mean Mac Jones is worse is when he is outside of structure, when he is forced to uh, have to get out of the pocket. He's good at maneuvering the pocket, but when you force him out of the pocket. Things get a little ugly for him. So uh, I like it. I think, if anything, I think they might need to bring in, uh, do something with the receiving core, though, um, mm. to compliment him. Because a lot of your guys are uh, big deep threats. Not to say he can't throw the deep ball. He just doesn't really throw it on a rope. You know, it's more of a heave ho and it'll like just yeah. be in the air for like. <laughs> Kind of minutes kind of at a time. Gobbles out a little bit. Yeah. No, I, I definitely agree with you. You know, I mean, I was sitting there with with Patriots football breakdown, and we were live, and you know, we were we were thinking Justin Fields. Now, don't get me wrong. While I do love Justin Fields, like, and I, I think Justin Fields easily is the more all around pure talented guy. But if we're gonna talk about pure system scheme fit. This is it for the Patriots. This is your guy. Like, it doesn't get more perfect than Mac Jones, who, what, I believe he has, like, his master's degree or something like that already. Something like that. He also has, like, a 4.0 GPA. So, the dude is brilliant. He can extend plays. He's not going to be mobile, but he can extend plays just so by scrambling around in the pocket. He can sense blitz. He's very, very good when it comes to the blitz. He can stand up tall in the pocket. People want to say he's a statue. I'm going to very much disagree with that. I don't know about you, but I just, I never saw that. I saw that he was able to extend plays because he was able to sense the pressure and he knew when he had to switch up the play or when he had to quickly go out wide left or go out wide right and then extend the, you know, play by that. Just because you're not running the ball and picking, picking up yardage, you know, 10, 15, 20 yards with your feet doesn't mean you can't be a good quarterback. And I think that a lot of people shy away from Mac Jones because of that. You know, people think that, well, he isn't athletic like a Trey Lance. He isn't athletic like a Justin Fields, so he's not going to be successful. And I just, I can't disagree more with that because, hey, at the end of the day, your guy is going to be your guy. I mean, if Justin Fields is the type of quarterback that fits the Chicago Bears scheme, then it's a perfect selection for them. But honestly, from what I heard, even if Justin Fields and Mac Jones fell down to 15, the Patriots still would have selected Mac Jones. You know, it sounds like this was a little bit of a smoke screen, actually, this whole Justin Fields thing, and that Mac Jones all along was the Patriots guy. In the end, the Patriots had more than enough ammunition to go ahead and grab Justin Fields if they really wanted to, and they chose not to, which really does just show that all along, Mac Jones was always their guy. And with those connections between Belichick and Saban, it made sense from the start, and I think we kind of just caught caught up a little bit too in you know what we were hearing from the media and and i think in the end the patriots got the guy that they wanted to get so yeah i mean worst case scenario quarterback depreciate uh d- don't depreciate in the nfl like look at what, what guys like carson wentz uh sam darnold went for in terms of uh trade value even josh rosen who had a bus of one season still garnered a second round pick and change so those guys still retain some sort of value so if anything, um, if you find out early, Mac Jones ain't the guy. You could still probably get something for him and just move on, find the next next uh, QB of the future. Exactly, I totally agree with that. That's something that I never even pointed out. So it's a really good point, uh, but I totally do agree with it. And you know what? I think Belichick is really going to do everything he can to make sure that Mac Jones can kind of just sit back for as long as he can and just get very, very comfortable with the system. This is the hardest system to learn in the NFL, especially offensively. But let's remember, Mac Jones is super, super smart. So I think if any quarterback was going to pick it up, it would be him. The also, you know, the other great thing about this that I think I said in my last video was that you don't really have to switch up the system. Now, look, 
is it a little bit awkward that Cam Newton's your starting quarterback and you know, you have Mac Jones as, you know, your, your backup. Yeah. It's, it's obviously it's a little, little different, little different. Um, but the Patriots have been running the same system for what two, three decades. And they tried to run that same system with Cam Newton last year. That's a big reason things didn't work out. Now, was it the only reason? Not at all. But it's a big reason that things didn't work out because they tried running a pure pocket passing quarterback system with a mobile quarterback like Cam Newton. And that is not Newton. That is not his strengths. He's a guy who's going to run the ball and pound over guys. And obviously, that's not what the Patriots did with Tom Brady. So, yeah, if you want to succeed with Cam Newton this year, you're going to have to change things up a little bit. But for the most part, you get to keep that same dynamic that you've had over the last couple of decades because he is really that exact same play style of Tom Brady that the Patriots have had over the last two decades. So I just think it's a glove fit. It is a perfect size fit for the Patriots. And again, he's not a Justin Fields. But at the same time, he he fits... He fits what the Patriots want to do. He fits the system better than any quarterback could have out of this entire draft class. Like this is the closest thing you're going to get to Tom Brady, to Tom Brady. Like, is, is he going to be Tom Brady? No, no one ever will. Like, yeah, let's just get luck. that clear. <laughs> let's just get that clear. No one will. No one. But if you can even get half of what Tom Brady is, it's an easy win. And if you can get those same intangibles, I think that's the best way the Patriots are going to succeed going forward. So I agree with you. You know, I, I do like that pick for them. So next up, a surprising move by the Patriots. They moved up very quickly day two. And they selected defensive tackle Christian Barmore. And now they traded up, or they traded rather two fourth round picks. They had three, but they traded two fourth round picks in order to trade up, I believe, a little bit more than 10 spots. Just straight off the bat, there's been a lot of controversy going around between is it in too much? Was it not enough? Did they get a steal? Like, what were your thoughts on them having to give up two fourth round picks and that second round pick, of course, in order to acquire him? I mean, I, it was no biggie to me. They're two fourth rounders. You're going up for a guy that is a legitimate first rounder, like Christian Barmore. Reasons that he fell was some teams saw him as a pass rush only option. Some teams apparently, um, uh, just thought he was uncoachable. Uncoach like literally some rumors like came out like a couple of days before um, that just apparently like he's this uncoachable monster at uh, or was at Alabama that really had no um, substance to it. But I think more so maybe teams just didn't value him as a three down uh, player. I think that was probably the biggest thing. Really? Okay, that's actually interesting. So, so I love having Brosman on the channel. He tells me things I didn't even know about. Um, what would you, what would you say is like the better better part of his play? Would you say that it would be as a pass rusher, or would you say he's better as a run stopper? I know he's like he's pretty good at both, but if you had to say one is more his play. What well, which one would that be? The the thing that makes him valuable is pass rush. He had the highest pressures. Uh, and uh, he had the highest win rate of any of the defensive interior talent in this class. Far and away, he was easily the best tackle in this class. Uh, and in a league, in a pass happy league, this is modern day NFL. That's super value. Like it, that's just valuable. If like if you're gonna if your death nail is like man, I really don't see him doing much against the run, then. I'm sorry, you're 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 playing in the you're yeah you're playing in the wrong era of football, like yeah the dude's super athletic for his size. He's a good fit, man. And the Patriots, uh, I was looking at their depth chart. And I think we talked about this a little bit too that they were actually pretty thin along that D line, and I thought this was a really good pick. Yeah, I mean this just solidified it for them like completely. I mean, I, I think I had him mocked to the Patriots in one. I think one mock draft early on, I think I actually had him at like 15 for fun. Obviously, if they did that, I wouldn't have been happy. Like that's way too soon. Um, but just because like, hey, we've been saying for years, the Patriots need a true defensive tackle, like high, high end round defensive tackle to come in. And you need an multi-purpose defensive tackle. I say this all the time. I feel like the Patriots get guys who they can either stop the run or they can rush the passer 
it's never both. And I think that screws them up so many times. Like you do need a guy who can do both. It can be an every down defensive tackle. And I do think that Barmore has that potential. I have also heard from some NFL experts that they feel that looking back at not just this year's, this year's draft class of defensive tackle, but the last couple of defensive tackle draft classes outside of like Quinn and Williams. This is like one of the best defensive tackles they've seen. Is that a little too hyped up or do you, would you agree with that statement? I mean, uh, early comp before um, the season was that he was going to have this big Quinn and Williams like rise. Cause he was just a rota uh, rotation player that year uh, with Quinn and Williams. So a lot of people thought he was going to have this big rise. Um, I don't think it was nearly as, Quinn and Williams esque as people anticipated, but I mean, I I would definitely rank him over guys like Derek Brown and uh, Javon okay. Kinlaw, who came out um, last year. So, yeah, yeah, he, dude, he's pretty darn good, man. He was 15 or 16th on my overall board. So, yeah, I mean, the fact that the Patriots were able to to snag him, I don't know if he's gonna be like I've heard some people say. You know, he's going to be this day one plug in starter, every oh, yeah. down defensive tackle. I don't know about every um, down, but he, yeah. he's day one plug in. Yeah, I, that's what I said. I was like, I don't know about all that. I do know he has some consistency issues. That was one of the things, too. I know that some people were having issues with for him. Um, but I also know Bill Belichick, and I think that he's going to want to very much develop him. And it doesn't matter who you are or where you're drafted. Like, Belichick does want to take a smaller approach with you. Even last year in a draft class that, probably played more than realistically they should have, but that was only because we literally had nobody else because we had no money to sign anyone. Um, even those guys didn't get a crazy amount of playing time. And now we have a lot of veterans above, you know, this, this draft class. So I definitely think that he's going to be one who does get more snap counts than a majority of guys. But let's remember that Belichick does love to go with experience. And I think it's all going to depend on the amount of snaps Barmore gets based off of how he plays. Now, if he's struggling, if he's kind of confused about the playbook or what, you know, offenses are showing him, Belichick will pull him back a little bit. But if he's showing that he can be in every down defensive tackle, he can get to the quarterback, he can apply pressure, he can help stop the run, then yeah, he's going to get more snaps. But let's remember that the Patriots do have uh, Devon Godshaw. They do have, um, who else do they have? They have Lawrence welcome, Guy. By the way. What happened? Coming from the Dolphins. Coming from the Dolphins. Yeah, coming from the <laughs> Dolphins too. I mean, he's he's going to be, I think the Patriots have a good defensive tackle class. You know, we, we do have... Um, who is it? Wise, Dietrich Wise. Yeah, he he he's back. an he's an edge rusher, but we see him a lot on the interior. Henry Anderson from the Jets. He can play edge. We also see him on the interior sometimes. So like, there's a lot of guys that are going to be shuffling in and out through here. Um, so I think some people hyped up a little bit, like what he's going to do right away to start the season. Um, but I do definitely think that if he's playing well, you know, the the more that you know, he progresses, he'll get more snap time as the games go on. Um, but the third round selection here, I, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it, it confused me at first. So I had to do a little bit more research on Ronnie Perkins, the edge rusher, because I felt like the Patriots were pretty set at edge. And that was just because you look at who they have at edge, right? You do still have Dietrich Weiss who can play at edge. You do still have Henry Anderson that plays at edge. Chase Winovich, Josh Uche, Matthew Judon, Kyle Van Noy, Dante Hightower. So many guys that play the edge and there's only two edges. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like there's just so yeah. many guys to play and only so many snaps that they can do that. You know, again, guys like Kyle Van Noy, Matthew Judon, like these are guys that are going to demand those playing time, like those snaps are going to demand those on defense, especially, and you're going to need to give it to them. I mean, you paid them how much money you're going to need to give it to them. And so in my mock drafts, I didn't have the Patriots taking an edge rusher early, and I don't even think I had them taking an edge rusher period. Now I will say this, it does make some sense just because the Patriots were one of the worst teams at stopping the run last year on runs to the outside. So it makes sense that they're trying to find more kind of like versatile defensive ends and guys that can stop the run because edge was a bigger problem for them than people realize. But I think they stacked up pretty well this offseason 
So I was a little bit surprised by this pick. What were your thoughts? Uh, for me, it, it's a great value pick because I had an early third round grade on him. And you got him late in the third. I, I mean, I thought it was just exceptional value. Um, in terms of Ronnie Perkins, the talent, he's a guy that he's a bit smaller of a uh, pass rusher, but um, he was very good against the run. That was kind of his upside. Um, from a pers- like a production standpoint, like he he's pretty like he he's pretty darn good. But I think the reason he kind of fell this far is because like a th- third of his pressures um, and two thirds of his sacks came in one game against Kansas. So I was like, well, it's Kansas, yeah. man. <laughs> but like overall, like it's great value. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you kind of you kind of already addressed in a position that of strength, but I'm not going to argue if it's the best value on the board. And at that time, it was the best value on the board. Yeah, and I think that's something that the Patriots did this year um, that was different from previous years. And like I like we like we've been saying, you know, Kraft called Belichick out publicly publicly, but he did say that he is seeing a different approach. And I mean, I can say from a Patriots standpoint, you know, Patriots fan standpoint who covers this stuff that I did definitely see a different approach. I feel like usually the Patriots would kind of go with a guy who was a great guy off the field, who was very good in kind of their meetings and the press conferences and all of that stuff, rather than kind of getting value and, and talent for the player. I um, mean, I think this year they kind of even beat needs because I've been saying offensive tackle, you know, higher up third, fourth, fifth round get an offensive tackle. I was saying I was always grabbing corners actually in the second round in my mock drafts because you need to get the longevity for the, for your secondary, because there's a lot of question marks after this season, right? We've even been hearing this season trade rumors about Gilmore and JC Jackson, which I believe at this point, they're pretty much died down, but you never know. It's the Patriots. So I was surprised to not see them go in those directions, but at the same time, I think that this draft was kind of defined by pure value and pure talent standpoint. And they got to a point where they said, Hey, offensive tackle corner, that's a really big need. But Ronnie Perkins is a much talented player who we could get more success out of than essentially any other offensive tackle or corner we can get here. But isn't, didn't Ronnie Perkins also have like, he was like the only college player to have a 90 plus grade in both stopping the run and um, rushing the passer. Uh, from the edge, I believe so. But then, then again, that Kansas game really inflated, really helped him up. Uh, yeah, that <laughs> <grade, so. laughs> yeah, really helped him up there. Yeah. So I, I, I also saw that he could play like a little bit of outside linebacker. You know, I, I know that the Patriots maybe, maybe if he plays more linebacker esque, maybe that's how he can get more on the field. I don't know too much about him though from an actual perspective as a linebacker. Do you know anything about him as like an outside to inside he, linebacker? He he has never really dropped back into coverage, so well, that's, that's just a big question mark. And his uh, pro day score, which it, it wasn't like great, it was like you know, it was average, par for the course, leads me to believe that that's not something that they probably should ask him to do, at least off the bat. Yeah, so it sounds like he'll be more of a um, of a coverage guy rather than, or not a coverage guy, a no, edge guy yeah. rather than, you know, more of your your classic outside to inside linebacker i'm sure they'll try it with him but i mean from from the most part if you kind of want to play to their strengths what the patriots love to do of course sounds like he's going to be more of your edge rusher actually little quick standpoint pats fans this also could potentially tell us that maybe somebody's out the door you know we have a lot of guys on this roster maybe, maybe. yeah maybe you do somebody. have a lot of guys on that roster i'm like i was I mean, I'm not going to argue like if you're going to go with one of the top guys like yeah available. That's honestly the best way to go about it in the draft. If whenever teams should never reach for need, it never it never ends well. It just leads you to reach in for players that had no business being there. Um, like and we, we've seen it in the past, like especially on these day two picks um, with <laughs> mainly light linebacker with like the Browns taking uh, what was it Taki Taki who's yeah probably going to be a cut candidate in the future um yes it's like yeah you just don't want to reach yeah no i totally agree so i mean again you know they picked him in the third round again i do believe it was more so from a talent and value standpoint but 
doing so, you can't help but to think that there's only so many roster spots for the Patriots. They're at about 80 some players right now out of 90. And a lot of these guys are starting quality NFL players. So it's going to be hard for them to get down to 53 players. We could potentially see more trades than usual when it comes to having to get down to 53 players. And Maybe somebody like a Chase Winovich is out the door because we've heard a lot of uh, a lot of concerns there. Which uh, he's really good though. Which I, I I will cry. I love Chase Winovich, one of my favorite players. But we also know that you know kind of some issues between him and Belichick. Him and Belichick have kind of had some back and forth. We also know that he uh, he's not your kind of do your job guy. Like get on the field, do your job, get off. Like when he makes a play, he's like looking at himself on the big board and everything and. You know, Belichick doesn't love that kind of stuff. I mean, personally, I, I don't care. I love his energy and I hope we keep him, but I don't know. I don't know. We've, yeah. um, we've heard some issues and where there's I smoke, mean, there's fire. I mean, the Patriots in general, they they probably have, are the, one of the best teams or at least among the best teams at, uh, figuring out a rotation for their defensive, like, or just for their, uh, alignment, like for their guys, they, their guys will get theirs. Even if Perkins roll early on is just like, um, passing down. It's fine. I'm sure he'll, he'll get his. Yeah. The thing with Chase Winovich is like, he hasn't exactly, they haven't exactly found out how to use him. And if he really fits exactly what they want to do, yeah, I think yeah. when they drafted him, it was, it was an excellent pick. And again, I still love him. So I hope they figure it out. But oh, again, where there's smoke, there's fire. where they got him. Cause I, I had would, like a what early second round grade on that cat. Yeah, I was, I was surprised. I was surprised when he fell and they got him where they did. And the fact that I actually, they actually got him surprised me. They actually chose to select him, but I'm hoping things work out. But of course, from a, from a football business standpoint, maybe they say, Hey, you can get something better out of him than we can. Let's make a trade cross your fingers. It doesn't happen, but you never know. So Moving on here, then from the third round on to the fourth, the Patriots got one of my favorite picks, actually. I mean, I really Me like this guy. Not, not from a, not probably from like a, a true value standpoint. I mean, the Patriots probably got better like steals than they did here in the fourth round, but I really like Ramondre Stevenson, the running back out of Oklahoma. I think that this has like so much potential for the Patriots. And I think that he's going to bring something that they don't really have in any of their running backs. What are your thoughts? Uh, he, he was a, my guy during the process. Uh, okay. despite his size, he's not nearly, he's not like a very physical back. He's a very patient. Um, he can cut on a dime. He's got great footwork. Ugh. and I, I, I just love that aspect of him. Um, in terms, like, he's not going to really do anything in the passing game. He was really just swings and screens at Oklahoma, but Still, man, I I just love his running style. Um, I I don't know what they're gonna end up doing. I think that might this might be an indictment on Sony Michelle, probably. Yep, yep. So. Couldn't have said that that better myself. So I've kind of thought of like a Jamal Charles, Legarrette Blunt type of vibes from him. What are your What are your kind of thoughts on like? Sign up, kind of some like comparisons for him. Um, oh gosh, it's tough because he's not nearly he's not nearly as physical as Blunt. Oh no, not at and, all. Yeah, and <laughs> I don't think and it's funny from a size like perspective. He's not Charles, but if you were yeah. to kind of like mix the two and take that physicality, but give him like Blunt size, like yeah. I could definitely see that. Uh, but yeah, no man, it, man, I hate giving out comps. Uh, yeah, they, they can be very dangerous because too many times people are like, oh, this is what he's going to like turn out to be. Yeah, and you're I, like, would, eh. I would definitely say, and again, this isn't a cop. This is a simple comparison. His his running style is very Le'Veon Bell-esque, um, especially right after his rookie season. Le'Veon Bell had to, he had to cut weight. Le'Veon Bell has never been a fast back. He has some of the best vision and he's a very patient um, once the hole is there, he goes right through it. That's that's Ramondre Stevenson's type of running Correct. style. Um, and obviously, he's not the receiving back that Bell is, but I, I would kind of equate the running style. Yeah, I've actually some other people have commented like Levy on Bell, and I can I can see that. Um, I definitely think that he is the closest thing to Blunt that the Patriots have had 
since LeGarrette Blunt, just because they haven't really brought in any of those guys. And I think he has the potential to be so. But obviously, I think the bi- like one of the big things that's going to hold him back from kind of being that type of guy, I think, is going to be the factor of he he plays with the mindset, from what I've heard, of a smaller yep. running back. <laughs> And Blunt did not do that. Blunt did not have a small running back mindset. He's his play style was very much similar, like cutting on the dime, very sharp. Like he could play like that, but he would still run over guys and bring guys on. And I think the only way Stevenson is going to kind of take on that role is if he plays in the mindset of a bigger back and not so small. Yeah, he needs to be willing to use his size a bit more because. I think he came into his pro day when, um, because he shed away. He was playing at 248, and he came into at least the senior bowl. He came in weighing 227. So I imagine his playing weight is going to be around that 230, 225 area. So yeah, it'd be nice to see him get a little more um, physical. Lay, oh, excuse me, lay the lumber and not try to be so uh, finesse. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Um, I think that. He definitely is going to get into the rotation, hopefully early. We all know Belichick likes to redshirt his his running backs, but I don't know. I, I could see this being an exception just because, you know, he's not going to be a replacement for really any, I would say, of these running backs because he's he's different. He's different than these other running backs that we've seen. He's not James White. I, he's not Sony Michelle. Like, he's a very different type of running back and he can be in every down running back. I believe for the Patriots also, you know, we've all been talking about pass catching running backs to replace James white, but in reality, maybe we should have been talking about an aspect that the Patriots are looking for in the running backs, but don't really have. And that is pass blocking, you know, and Ramondre Stevenson is good at being a blocker. He can be a pass blocker for the Patriots. He can catch passes. Now he's not going to be a Demetric Felton. I don't, I don't even think he'll be a Chris Evans. He's not going to be your James White replacement, not even close, but he can do the easy stuff. He can do the check downs. He can do the screen passes. Fumbles are a little bit of an issue, which at one point they were for blunt too. If you want to continue on the comparison, but um, I think that They'll figure it out. They'll be fine. I'm not too worried about that, but he has just every aspect that I think the Patriots are looking for and adds an aspect that they don't really have too much in their running backs. So I think this could be very lethal for the Patriots and we needed a a running back for the future. Like you said, Sonny Michelle likely out. They declined his fifth year option. They picked up Isaiah wins, but they declined Sonny Michelle's and it was only like $4 million. So I think that kind of speaks on how they see him and he's probably out. I wouldn't even hate. I mean, I feel like they should have done this before, but you know, to, to see a trade of Sony Michelle, I wouldn't hate it. Like I said, I feel like they should have done it before the deadline of the fifth year option was up, but it could, that, that could be what tells us, Hey, they're not going to trade him. Um, but I, I think it's, it's pretty easy to say Sony likely isn't back with the Patriots. It won't even surprise me if they just straight up released him, really? especially with the emergence of uh, Damian Harris last year. So, yeah, Damien Harris is going to be probably your still number one running back. Um, but Ramondre Stevenson is going to get a pretty good workload, I believe, also with with everything that he's able to bring to the table uh, versus like what a lot of these other guys are able to bring. Like you much rather have a Ramondre Stevenson being a pass blocker for you than you would like a James White. So not that he's terrible, but I mean, uh, it's it's just still, a, obviously it's the a, upsides a, with the in yeah. the receiving aspect, you know. Yeah. So moving on here. Over to the fifth round, I think that this was another steal for the Patriots. And this is where they got linebacker Cameron McGrone out of Michigan. The Patriots finally got their Michigan player of the draft. They love their Michigan players. Last year, they got Uche and Onwenu from Michigan. Like, they they just love Michigan players. To be fair, Michigan got them a couple of Super Bowls. So, (laughs) damn straight they did. Damn straight they did. Um, But they got Cameron McGrone. I want to know your thoughts on McGrone and and what does he bring to the Patriots? What did you think of the value? Uh, the value I think was fair. Uh, I had him in early day three. Okay. Um, he's a very athletic linebacker. Um, I'd say he's got average length. Uh, the thing is, he just doesn't do anything in coverage. Like uh, yeah. he's just not a playmaker in that aspect. But with his athletic ability, it leads you to believe that he can be. So you're kind of betting on that. I don't really see him doing anything early on, uh, much like outside of really just warming up the bench. 
But um, like I like this potentially for the future. So yeah, he's yeah. I I know I, I could see the Patriots going two ways: use him on special teams or just redshirt him and put him on IR. It's probably the second one just because he had a torn ACL. I think it was an ACL. ACL or Achilles? I think it was ACL though. I believe it was ACL. Yeah, I could find that out real quick. Your bro is gonna fact check me here, so <laughs> you guys don't fact check me in the comments. I believe it was ACL, and that just happened in November. Although, what Michigan played? What five or six games? Six maybe. Um, yeah, they only played. Well, yeah, I think they only played five because they declined the uh, Ohio State game, trying to screw out of Ohio State out of the playoffs. And um, then, and then that was ACL. It was the ACL. Yeah. So I was right. All right, sweet. So yeah, yeah so that's like that's six months thing. nowadays. So it's not so bad. Yeah. So it's not it's not terrible. Um, but obviously the Patriots are gonna take it very very slow. Rookie mini camps right around the bend. Training camps right around the bend. Wouldn't be surprised to not see him there if he is participating. It's gonna be very very limited, and this could just be one of those things where Belichick's like, it's gonna be tough for me to, uh, you know get all these guys on the roster. How am I going to do it? Cameron McGrone signed for four years, rookie contract, you redshirt him for this year. You don't push any of these injuries. I could really see that being in a, an option for the Patriots. Now I do know he's good at stopping the run. He's made some very good hits. He I've seen, I mean, this isn't something that I've heard, but from what I've seen, I feel like he can really diagnose what an offense is doing fairly well. So maybe he could be like a play caller for the Patriots, but what are your, what are your thoughts on like, obviously Dante Hightower, he's going to be retiring any year now. Could he be like that replacement for Dante Hightower? Man, I really feel like that's what they got Anthony Jennings for. Really? To be the replacement for Hightower. Okay. I wasn't that high on Jennings, though, to be fair. Um, McGrone, he doesn't offer, like, in terms of body style, like body type, n- not close to Hightower at all. But yeah, the guy can be a play caller. Um, I think he has it upstairs. It's just, I think where he sh- really struggles because talked about he is athletic but he's never making a play in pass coverage um i think he does struggle with um just trying to diagnose um route concepts you know just understanding that but again that'll come in time you're taking a fifth round flyer on this guy so where did you have him on your rankings of your linebackers Ooh, ooh, that's a good question because I can't remember where you had him either. Me either. <laughs> because, like, I, I went, so I went back to your rankings after the Patriots draft class. And I was like, all right, just curious, just curious, where did Brosham have all these guys ranked? Like, or did he even not have them ranked? Yeah, I did move some guys just before the draft. Like Peter Werner, I had um, move a couple of spots up just because everyone fell in love with the pro day, man. Yeah, I don't blame him, especially in a year like um, this year where it was just limited sample size we were working with. So a lot of people really bought into the pro days. Um, let's see. Cameron McGrone was my 12th, 12th linebacker. Okay. All right. Not bad. And especially in a class where I feel like a, a lot of linebackers were, 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 were going for the most part. Like we saw, we saw a decent amount of linebackers go off. I mean, yeah, JOK yeah. dropped JOK dropped, but I mean, Zavin Collins at, what 16 I was a little surprised about that a little surprised about that. a lot of people were a little surprised about that i mean i hope it works out because i mean his reaction like seems like a very genuine guy but i was a little surprised that that's kind of the route they decided to go um but obviously like i don't know wait when did jabril cox go what round did he uh, go? Did he, he went on the fourth, fourth round he the fourth. The fourth. yeah see yeah and I, he was like my sixth, sixth yeah i think linebacker so yeah, he was, yeah, he was like one of my Monty guys Rice too. going ahead of him, which I liked Monty Rice too, though. Yeah. So I can't say crap. Yeah, so he was one of my favorite linebackers too. If you guys saw my mock drafts, you would know that. So, like, if this was a question where, hey, both these guys were on the board and they still went with McGrone, maybe it's a discussion. But look, a lot of these guys were already off the board and you still got him in the fifth. Like, it's it's good value. And I think, you know, maybe developing, uh, we'll, we'll see more out of him and maybe him sitting behind for a year could, um, could be beneficial, but he's going to make the roster no matter what. I, I believe like they'll, they'll play on IR. I was going to say McCrone did better than the guy I had rated ahead of him. Dylan Moses didn't even get drafted. Really? Yeah. See, I mean, wild. 
I mean, I'm actually kind of surprised the Patriots didn't even really take on any UDFAs because every year they have a UDFA make the final roster. But this is just a year where that's likely not going to happen. But I do know that the Patriots are, they're scared. And I think I've heard this about other teams too, actually, that they don't know what the NFL is going to do. If they're going to be like a nine, if they're going to allow a 90 man roster, if it's going to be like last year with like an 80 man, because I know last year, if you had like 80 players, 85 players, something like that, you got to practice on the same field. But if you had 90, you had to separate it on two different fields. So I think that's kind of what they're scared about. Wow. Is, um, yeah. I didn't they, even notice that they haven't signed anybody. That's wild. Yeah. They, they, they actually, well, they just signed yesterday Did a they? kicker from Michigan. Okay. Well, <laughs> it doesn't really count, <laughs> but usually right after the draft, the Patriots are making like 10, 15 signings of UDFAs and they haven't done any. I know that this is a smaller class too, but Still not very oh, yeah. Belichick like, but I just I know that they're very uh, hesitant because they want to wait to to figure out, hey, what is the NFL going to allow? Because if they it's this is the same situation as last year where, hey, 90 men, two different fields, 80, 85, whatever the number was, then you can do on one field. The pages are going to practice on one field. So it they're just kind of trying to see what route to take. Um, so maybe they pick up a bunch if 90 is allowed, but that's just with time we're going to have to. um talk about uh but in the sixth round their first six round pick 188 overall the patriots did take joshua bledsoe the safety from missouri i i didn't love this pick i'm going to be completely real with you i don't know what your thoughts on him were or if you really my know least favorite pick. <laughs> yeah i i don't i don't love him i don't love him i i said this multiple times like if you're gonna take a defensive back shouldn't they be able to cover and i feel like <laughs> joshua bledsoe just 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 can't do that yeah, you're not wrong. He had the he actually didn't win any reps, uh, whether it was the game or um, the drills at the Senior Bowl week. Didn't win one, lost everything, <laughs> zero. Um, he was literally the worst defensive back player there. I, I really think this guy's just gonna end up special teams. Like maybe at best, like he's slot, but he, he's probably special teams. That's the only. Th thing i can imagine it's a six round it's kind of whatever you know but you know yeah i think i had an undrafted free agent grade on him so yeah i mean i i wasn't it wasn't in love with this one at all i think there's other routes that they could have gone i know another safety who's is who's escaping me went into udfa and got signed by someone but i can't remember uh, darius washington yeah would you say washington's a better prospect than way better i had a third round grade on him i I, and I can tell you why he fell just because of size. Um, his test numbers weren't great. Combined with that, a lot of people just want to lock him into the slot um, just because, again, of his size. But he's pro probably he had the he was the best processor in this in the safety class. It really shocked me that no team was willing to give him a shot. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that just blew my mind. Yeah, I, I think the Patriots, if they really wanted to bring on a safety, which I don't disagree with, they're good at developing defensive back. I just, I would have went with him. And this is something that I said, even when the pick happened, I just, I don't agree with it. I don't love the pick. Maybe they have something else in mind. Maybe they want to play him at hybrid linebacker, close to the line of scrimmage box. I mean, I don't, we'll have to see what they want to do. I know he brings some versatility. He has a nice size to him. He doesn't bring anything too crazy height wise, but size wise and build, like he has a, a a pretty nice build to him. So like, that's nice. But again, you're going to draft a defensive back. You want him to be able to cover. And I mean, this could just be honestly like a six round pick unless he just shines, just completely shines on special teams could very well just end up being cut. I mean, if we're going to talk about guys that aren't going to make the roster, his would be one of the first names. Yeah. Like this could very well be someone who, if he doesn't look good, just straight up gets cut the prop they, they very well could put him back on the practice squad at least yeah. if he shows something um and i i definitely could see could see that and expect that but to make the final roster unless he shows out like i just i i'm gonna take a flyer right now and just say he get says he gets cut but with their next six round pick 197 they got an offensive tackle finally in will sherman william sherman what were your thoughts on Sherman? i love william sherman man like, really i think because he brings a little versatility that he probably ends up being a better guard in the nfl um but i mean he's still gonna be a depth piece don't like yeah. th this guy may be a starter like a replacement starter down the line at best 
but like I think immediately he can be a swing tackle. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, man, and yeah, this guy he just played for a Colorado team. Um, not to bang on Colorado too much. That they're not coached well. They're not coached well defensively or offensively. Um, I don't know what they're doing down there, but despite that, William Sherman was actually a very good pass blocker. Um, he struggled in 2019, but he, I think that's when he moved to the right side. I think if you stick this guy, uh, just on the left side, he can be a solid replacement starter. But like I said, early on, you could use him as like a six tackle come in, just help out, man. I, I really actually like the value of this pick. Really? Wow. So I, I, I did like William Sherman looking at the board and who was left. So I don't think it was a bad pick, but you know, hearing you talk makes me a little bit more optimistic. Um, and I mean, yeah, hey, there's a role for a guy like this. Yeah. Like and this guy, I don't care what team drafted him. He was good. He's going to make the roster because there's a role for him in the NFL. And the Patriots are one of the best teams at developing these late round, like offensive tackles and defensive backs. Like it's, those are two positions. They're very, very good at offensive tackle in the later rounds and defensive backs. Now we could talk about, I'm definitely forgetting some, but we could go um, David Andrews. David Andrews was an undrafted free agent. You want to talk about um, on Wenu, he was a six round pick. Um, I'm forgetting somebody, uh, Marcus Cannon, who's not with the Patriots anymore. He was traded this off season, but he was a six round pick also. So the Patriots know how to develop these guys. So I think you know, if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be the Pat. So, you know, I definitely did like the, the, the pick here, at least they finally got an offensive tackle and it has potentials. He's going to be the best guy. Is he a for sure? Hey, he's going to be the future of your offensive line. No, but again, six round, you're taking a flyer and he has potential. But with the last pick here, seventh round, 242, the Patriots finally get a wide receiver. Everybody was claiming for a wide receiver. This is some of the best depth at wide receiver uh, the last couple of years in the draft class. And the Patriots just haven't, taken advantage of it but at least they finally picked someone up even if it's the seventh round they they still pick someone up but they get Trey Nixon not exactly your uh classic Patriots wide receiver really at all um very similar to how they address free agency very yeah do you you want to talk about that a little bit yeah he is he's a speedster that that's exactly what he is um he might have some of the worst ball skills in this draft though uh like last year his like what, what what was his dropper? He had like five drops on um 30 catchable balls. No. Um and like that carried over from the year before where he had like seven drops. So like he's well above that 10% drop rate, which is like sh- just huge red flags. Uh he's really not much outside of just a an, an outside deep threat. Like he, he didn't even contribute a lot in special teams. Um at least in, in terms as a returner at uh central Florida. So uh yeah, this this might be another guy we see uh to the practice squad. <laughs> yeah, I agree. You know, he's another guy you're not gonna you're you're not gonna lock in being a a lock for the Patriots. And a lot of people want to say, well, hey, you know, maybe it's the next Julian Edelman. And I'm like, look, you you can't say that every quarterback they draft in the six and every wide receiver they draft in the seventh is going to be the future. Like it's it's a very, very different pick, very different play style than Edelman and just your classic Patriots wide receivers. Very, very different. But I could see I could see why they necessarily drafted him for the 2021 season if Cam Newton's your starter, because that's where Newton does excel as a passing quarterback, it's not the short to intermediate routes. It's the deep ball. It's the best portion of his game when it comes to being a passer is that deep ball. So you have Nelson Aguilar on one side, you have Trey Nixon on the other side, two guys that can get down the field very fast and stretch the field for you and possibly vertical threats. And, you know, maybe that helps Cam Newton out. Is it going to help Mac Jones out all that much? Probably not. Maybe they try to do some like sweeps with him, but you know, for the most part, I don't see anything too special here. He also, he's pretty small too, I believe. Like that concerns yeah, me a little bit. 180. Like oh. he's going to get pushed around, I feel potentially a little bit. Like he's just, he's a little too small. Um, I know he's made some decent catches in traffic, um, but I don't know. That size does concern me a little bit. Um, but he does bring, again, an aspect, you know, to the Patriots that I would say outside of Nelson Aguilar, 
they don't I'm trying to think. I don't really think they necessarily have. Like for the most I mean, part, you, Jacoby you kind Myers of is kind of a vertical threat, ain't he? Yeah, Jacoby Myers definitely can bring that. Um, I would say he gets open more so for his footwork than he does his yeah. speed, yeah. as where Trey Nixon and Aguilar are more speed. Um, and then kind of your Kendrick Bournes, your Jacoby I mean, Myers. You only win so much. If if your route running is essentially just I'm gonna try to run really fast down the field, you're not gonna win in the NFL. Yeah. No, it never works. It, it never works it, ever. I mean, yeah, you can be maybe an average, decent receiver at best, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna be yeah. above average, you know. But I, I said that, hey, realistically, at best, this is probably like a Philip Dorsett, Demir Bird at best for the Patriots. Which, I mean, hey, in the seventh round, I guess it's not terrible, but I, I think, yeah, I mean, are, essentially, I these are throw anyway. <laughs> Yeah, they're you're you're just taking a chance on a guy and you're saying, hey, if we get even average out of him, then I mean it's a win. But yeah, I, mean, I think getting getting William Sherman out of those last three picks was cl- was clutch. So yeah, so what would you say? So you would you say nah, who'd you say is the best pick? I would say overall for the Patriots. The best pick? Um oh geez. Um in terms of value, it's Christian Barmore probably. Okay. Um. Yeah, in, in, I think in terms of actual value, Christian Barmore. Uh, and I guess maybe from wh- from where Ronnie Perkins went, like on my big board, that was like 30, uh, 30 spots behind where I thought he would have gone. Mm-hmm. So that was good value too. I, I honestly, Mac not trading up for Mac Jones for me. Is just the biggest win though. Oh yeah, I, for sure. I just, uh, yeah, not having to sacrifice a first rounder next year, um, not having to sacrifice any picks whatsoever, just letting him come to you, I thought was just great. That's what you want. That's, so, yeah. You took a dub, and then your least favorite pick is is blood. So I'm guessing. Yeah, but I mean, hey, it's a six rounder. It's so, a sixth rounder. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Not I like mean, they drafted Ian the Book in the fourth round. Yeah, it's like, do you love the pick? No. I mean, look, let's just be happy this isn't a Jordan Richard situation where they took a guy who was a sixth round projection and they took him in the second. Oh. Just be happy that that didn't happen again, Pats fans. Like, we could just pray pray to God that at least Belichick drafted him where he was supposed to go, right? That's just see exactly. That's what you want to do, man. You want to try to cheat value where you can. And I think that's where the Raiders went wrong, man. Even oh, if they yeah. thought Probably. Alex Leatherwell was their guy, they should have known no team was going to go for him in the first. So what you do is you either try to trade down or you try to trade up from that second round pick to get Alex Leatherwood. And that's why the Raiders are such a joke of an organization, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, Ironically, actually, though, uh, my first mock draft after the 2020 class, I predicted that. <laughs> I had the Raiders really? picking Alex uh, Leather one of the first round. My first mock that I did right after the 2021 or 2022 draft was done, I did a 2021 uh, two round mock draft. I had Alex Leatherwood going to the Raiders. So were people were people pissed off about that? Not at the time. I mean, Alex Leatherwood was at one point like kind of a consensus first round pick, and then just his flaws were put on display because like he, the reason he didn't come out 2022, he, he wasn't. He wasn't the athlete. He wasn't nearly as explosive as guys like Mackay Becton, um, mm-hmm. uh, Tristan Wirfs. Um, oh gosh, some there was someone else. Oh, uh, Jedrick Wills. Uh, he wasn't those guys. So he's like, okay, I'm going to come out in next year's class where really Sewell's probably the only guy that'll be ahead of me. And he he just got he got question like lazy. He got questionable in some pass protection. Like when he's facing speed rushers, like he drags his feet uh sometimes but like other reps it's like they look brilliant he uses his length like he's got the ideal build like he's not a bad pick he might end up working out but in terms of value of where everyone thought he was gonna go even if you just trade back to later in the first round and just be able to recruit or like get something it's just a bad pick in terms of value good i agree i agree but you know what if the the raiders take a big step back which they probably will i'm okay with it because that just means more potential for uh, the pats to get into the playoffs so yeah i mean if things go downhill for y'all that probably means Derek carr's on the uh trading block so <laughs> 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 right 
<laughs> I'm, I'm surprised he hasn't already been traded, honestly. Uh, yeah, uh, so many people like Raiders fans go to bat hard for him, and I get it. Like, I'm not going to lie. I think Derek Carr is a – like, he, he can be uh, – at his best, he's a top 15 quarterback, um, probably more of a top 20 quarterback in the league, which is fine. It means he's a starter, but he's not going to really do anything without anything around him. He's like Danny Dimes. Yeah. You know what? Just uh, Packers trade Rodgers to the Broncos and then – car to the Packers. There you go. What? So you don't like uh, Jordan Love? You don't like apparently uh, Patrick Mahomes 2.0? <laughs> I think it's I think it's some some BS saying he's 2.0. I don't know. I I just feel like he needs to develop a little bit more. From what I've heard they like his development, but he's not there yet. Um you don't want to push that if he's not there then he's not there. I oh, don't know. I just, I think not. he needs I think he needs to develop more. Like even coming out of the draft, I didn't think he was like a year one starter and if they don't think he's ready even still, Dan, like you don't want to, you don't want to throw him into the fire. Man, I had a third round grade on him uh, going into the draft just because, like, I couldn't believe the Patrick Mahomes hype he was getting. Oh my god, no! Oh it my was god, ridiculous! Like he was nowhere near as accurate as Patrick Mahomes. No, like it, I'll say, Spencer it, it, Rattler this year could be Mahomes esque if he get a, get his game consistent. What's his projection? First round. Uh, yeah, he's first round for me. He's the top quarterback on my board right oh. now. Just the arm talent is ridiculous, man. He just needs to be consistent. Damn. Well, yeah, this quarterback fun, class man. is going to be interesting. It's not nearly looking as top heavy as this past year, but it could be. There's a lot of like potential sleeper candidates. So it's a good thing the Patriots got their quarterback this year. <laughs> That's what <laughs> That's I'm hearing. Right. And I'm saying, even if it doesn't work out, man, even if it like doesn't work out down the line, shoot. That's just draft capital. You could uh, trade. Yeah, some team will take a flyer on him for sure. Like they'll oh, be yeah. quarterback, they'll be quarterback needy teams every year, every year. So it always works out that way. Every, it always does. Some, there's like five or six, seven teams in need of a quarterback. Yes, sir. But Broshi, you already know I appreciate you for having or well coming onto the channel. If you guys do want to check out our, me. if you guys want to check out our like literally right before the draft uh, video I did with Broshmo just to kind of like <laughs> recap it, even though the draft is done, you know, go ahead and check it out. I mean, it's still a fun Look at video. how wrong we were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like hear how wrong I was about some of the things, but you know what? I was actually proud because I got, I got a good amount of first round picks. Right. And I was, I was like, all right. Yeah. Didn't, did yeah. you do Mac Jones to the Patriots? I can't remember. I can't remember. Cause we didn't do trades. I can't remember either, but even like, even like when like the board started shaking out, like right before, like you can even go back like to my, my, uh, day one live stream. And you can see, like, I was like, Oh, this guy's going to go here. Picks in. That's the guy that went there. Like I could call it right before. So, I mean, the fact uh, I, mean, I was just like, so yeah, some, some dude was like, yo, um, can you like, let me know about the lottery numbers for tomorrow? Or I was like, <laughs> I mean, I can try. I can try, but don't be mad if it's wrong. Man, my my draft projections fell apart after uh, the Dolphins went Waddle. No, I think I, yeah, I, that's. I saw that's like crazy. late news that like man, Waddle's the pick. Waddle was always the guy, and I was like, why did they trade two first rounders then for Waddle? Like that doesn't make sense to me. But yeah, that's where things started to get a little bit wonky. Things started to kind of yeah. Got Najee Harris. Harris on, I think Najee Harris was the only pick I got after that. To the Pittsburgh, just because the Steelers are dumb. It took one <laughs> takes one pick, one pick for the whole entire draft to get Ball shaken park, up, dude. It was one so pick. But of course, if you guys do want to check more of Bro Schmau, which I highly recommend, like he said, he's going to be coming out with those rankings. Yes, for 2022 already. Guys, get prepared. Get prepared for 2022. You guys know right when the season ends. Sometimes even Towards the end of the season, we already are talking about the draft. And uh, although I don't cover it year round, Broshmo does. So you are you guys are going to want to check those out. So, oh, Broshi, yeah. many, appreciate you. Many, many prospects to uh, check out. I got lucky and a lot of them decided to return. So it was just like copy and paste to my uh, <laughs> to next paste. year's board. Yes, sir. So make sure you guys check out Broshmo, all of your draft content, and of course, some more NFL content if you guys want to check that out. Like I always, that schedule out uh, in a couple of days. So. Yes. Yes. I believe Wednesday it drops, I think. So link in the description below to Broshmo's channel. Are you going to be covering something for the, uh, the, the, 
schedule drops? Uh, yeah, I'm going to do like um, team breakdowns. All uh, right. That'll be like 32 videos. That'll be great. Just yes, take sir. a team of video, sure. um, kind of break down what I think the roster is going to look like, uh, their starters, snap counts, uh, who will probably be their snap snap count leaders. And, uh, of course, a uh, high and low in terms of uh, win total now that we have this beautiful 17-game season. Oh, yes, sir. Some love it, some hate it. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. It's going to be fun, but... Y'all already know, make sure to leave a big, big like on this video. Go ahead and subscribe to Bro Schmo. Subscribe to your boy if you haven't already for all of your New England Patriots news from top to bottom. And share the video with some friends if you have. And if you want to, I mean, why not, right? Friends, family, haters, like, just, just slap it. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. So <laughs> I appreciate it tremendously. But like always, Pats Nation, stay loyal, stay truthful. But most importantly, go Pats.